Well, hello, I'm Josh and I am back once again with another great film to tell you about. And today I'm going to be talking about William A. Wellman's 1943 western, The Oxbow Incident. So The Oxbow Incident follows two cowboys who come into your usual western town. They drop into the saloon and try to enjoy themselves and get to know the locals. However, shortly after, they are interrupted when news comes of a farmer who was murdered and had his cattle stolen. The townspeople are furious, and though a few wish to wait for the sheriff to return, many of them decide to form a posse and hunt down these cattle thieves themselves. The two decide to go along, and later that night they actually capture the supposed cattle thieves. Though as the night goes on, it becomes less and less clear if they are actually guilty. And throughout the night, the few who think the men are innocent are forced to face off against those who went vengeance as they plan to hang the three men in the morning. So ultimately, this film is almost like a fable about the dangers of mob justice. Though it is technically a western, the story could easily be adapted to current life and it would feel just as relevant. In fact, I think that is likely why this story was told this way. By making it a period piece, it feels much less tied to 1943 when it was made and ultimately just feels more timeless. This film just really gets you invested as the viewer, probably because it makes you wonder what you would do in these situations. People's emotions get so intense that they latch onto a story and they don't want to give it up despite conflicting evidence. In the film, it shows that these townspeople want vengeance for their friend so much that they don't care what the cost is or even really if they're right. And this mob justice mentality has really been something that has occurred and reoccurred throughout history. I... I can't. We'll see to it that you can. The kid's seen enough already. Why don't you let him alone? This is not your affair, Carter. Thank you, just the same. I'll have no female boys bearing my name. And it also explores the dangers of over-glorifying masculinity within a genre which is all about having strong masculine heroes. Something that feels really ahead of its time, as in the early 1940s, these kinds of darker westerns were simply not around. Westerns were viewed more as simple good guy versus bad guy stories, so something like the Oxbow Incident was pretty difficult for audiences to accept at the time. And it wouldn't be until much later that these kinds of films would be truly appreciated. Harry Morgan told me that when he stood up and everyone stood up there leaving the theater and he saw Orson Welles in the crowd and as Orson Welles walked by him he stopped for a minute and he looked at, at Harry and he said they don't realize what they just saw. And I think director William Wellman does an incredible job with this film. Despite being a western, at many moments it feels expressionistic taking advantage of the black and white cinematography and really uses the relatively low budget set based production to his advantage. Though conversely at the same time, he never tries to draw attention to himself with any flashy camera moves, but after a few watches it becomes very clear just how deliberate he was with this film's appearance. He is shown to be incredibly subtle for his time with this film. One of the most powerful moments coming from, and this is a spoiler warning so I'll put a timestamp for when you can skip ahead. But after dawn comes and the three men are hung, the sheriff returns revealing that the farmer is very much alive and actually sold his cattle to the three men just as they said he did. And so all the men in this posse return back to the saloon traumatized at what they just did to these innocent people. And once they get back, Henry Fonda begins to read the letter that Dana Andrews asked to be given to his family after he was hung. The letter that he reads at the end of that movie, he found the sound for that. There's a huskiness to his voice and a patience to his words. And when he's standing at the bar, you don't even see his eyes. It's a very subtle thing, but it really affects the scene. 
Though seeing someone cry on screen often triggers empathy in the audience and helps create the emotion a director wants for a scene, I think hearing just his words and letting it all sink in, as it is for all the other participants, is equally if not even more effective. Specifically, we feel this through Harry Morgan's profile. It's a very odd composition, so much so that it could easily be seen as a mistake at first glance. But when you think of how many people would have looked at this specific framing and composition, you realize that it could not have been just a happy accident. And Wellman actually made several great films in his day, including the gangster classic The Public Enemy, the World War I aviation film Wings, which actually won the very first Best Picture Oscar, and the original version of A Star is Born. And this film has some incredible performances. Some of the ones that stand out, of course, are Henry Fonda, Dana Andrews. You also see a young Harry Morgan, even younger than the Harry Morgan in the film Moonrise, which I talked about a couple weeks ago, as well as a very young Anthony Quinn. But there are also a few lesser known names who are just as wonderful, like Harry Davenport, Frank Conroy, Mark Lawrence. Jane Darwell is another notable name, as she had actually just recently won the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for her performance as Ma Joad in the John Ford film The Grapes of Wrath. Alright, so if you want to see the Oxbow Incident, it's available to watch from all the usual streaming sites as a rent or buy option. Or you can find it physically in various ways, including this very nice edition from Kino Lorber. All right, so for the comment question, I am wondering, what is a film that really affected you emotionally? As I said, I really found this film to be just incredibly powerful. And I'm wondering, what are some films that you've seen that had a similar effect on you? Be sure to put your favorites in the comments section down below and start discussing. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see some more of these. Remember to keep watching movies and I will see you again soon.